I think it's about time to start the 2020 version of the Apex Micro Mouse Contest. I'm delighted that you're all here to watch. We have a fantastic lineup this year. We have more mice than we've had in quite a few years. We have people from Japan. We have people from the UK. We have all kind of college students from local schools. So we're super excited about having the, the lineup that we do this year. Our first entry is HAL 900, and you can start it running. It has a voice synthesizer on it, and we're trying to hear it talk or think while, while it's running. So we'll do this for a little while. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a HAL 900 Micromats, and it is an absolute pleasure to be here in Long Beach at EPEC 2024. The center is very close. I am feeling much better now I am at the center. Doesn't crash, then we give you uh, we give you a, a bonus or back. Basically, if it does crash, we charge we charge you two seconds for touching it. Uh, so it's banging around. There's no penalty for banging the walls as long as it doesn't damage the main. Okay, so our next entry is Mercury. Mercury comes from uh, UC Irvine. They have a, a Micro Mouse program, and Kyle has been involved in that program. He's a senior now, so this particular entry is his own entry. So, I just want to say for people that have not seen this contest before, the goal is to build a robot that can find its way through this maze. It always starts in one corner, so it knows which, where it's starting, and it knows where it's trying to go, which are the four squares in the middle. It knows what the size of the maze is, so this is on a 18 centimeter grid. All right, fantastic. Wow. Well done, that's outstanding. Okay, Pico. Uh, Yuki participates in the uh, Micromouse contest in Japan, and her company, RT Corporation, among other things, makes Micromouse that people use for teaching. The first part of the contest is to learn the maze, and then usually the next run or more is to try to go as fast as possible through it. So the pattern is different every year, but the for the maze, the question is that we changed the maze pattern since 1986. So that every race has a different pattern. But to say the difficulties of having a maze with such long straightaways is that as you go down the straightaway, you don't actually get any information about where you are. Because of the sensors are using infrared sensors. Uh, we, we usually ask that they don't, that there's no flash photography at the contest. Uh. All right, excellent. Well, that was round three. These two gentlemen, if you look in the brochure, saw the Veritasia video that was done on the Micromouse contest. Part of it was filmed at APEC in Florida in 2023. So they saw the video, they were inspired, and here they are this year. I mean, it's unbelievable. So this is a really it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So this next mouse, uh, Peter Harrison is gonna be running. It's Maze Runner 32. So. The UK Micromouse community has been working hard to build some kits or some open source designs so that people can build their mice uh, around something that's easy and then they can design something more custom for their next start. We do give a prize for the fastest run of the day. 
3.59. So, you know, it was about 100 milliseconds slower, even though he had programmed it to go faster, right? So, you know, if it slides out around the corner a lot, then, then it might have a longer path, and it takes a while to correct for that, okay? Yeah, if you touch it at all, then it's counting as a touch. No matter. He lost track of Michael Miles in the intervening years since 1979. He recently retired and realized, you know, there's still plenty of Michael Miles activity going on. In fact, it's probably fiercer than it was. So four months ago, he started working on this. And here we go. And it'll be very quick, Ron. All right. <laughs> All right, four months. This, the next gentleman that's going to compete is from Mitsubishi Electric, one of the exhibitors at our uh, at APEC here. So the thing that's on his head is a, a vacuum assisted, I don't know, basket maybe you'd say, that he can lower in the front and it can be used to pick up balls. They turn on a fan and they suck it up. And then, uh, if, if he wants to throw it, he can actually eject the ball. It has some other really cool features. You might want to see it at, after the contest. It has a, a display on the front that looks like sort of an eye. That's right. And it often, I think it can look to the left or look to the right if it's thinking about which way to go. So. This is probably the first time we've ever had a company entry at the Micro Mouse Contest in APEC. So I think this is particularly cool. Lots of people come and say, oh yeah, we're gonna do this next year for sure. Never happens, right? Never happens. Okay, our next entry is Gus. Achilles heel of the Micro Mouse Contest is, in fact, the maze. No one has this much space in their living room, right? Occasionally, you work at a university, and maybe they can let you keep the maze out for a little while around the contest, but uh, most people don't get to practice on a full size. that the competitors that we have tonight, some of them are extremely fast. So we try to have a reasonable base so that the times are not too close to zero. So bigger, chunkier. Are you here? You're ready. Cool. For people that are interested, the Micro Mouse contest was first proposed, I think, in 1977 by the editor of uh, IEEE Spectrum, Don Christensen. And they actually ran the contest in 1979 in, uh, in New York City. So the contest was intended to be something to use the new microprocessor and that you need intelligence to get through the maze. Okay, Mr. Fusion. Okay. So, so this has the Back to the Future car on it. And so in 1980, uh, so the first one was in 1979, so in 1980 he introduced the contest in England, and there were some people from the Japan Science Foundation that were there, and they saw it, and they said, this is a good idea, we should do this too. And so in 1980 they also organized the contest in Japan. So that's actually how the, the modern contest is uh, 
develop. All right, well done. 55 seconds for the search. You know, when Alberta designs the maze, she has a diagonal maze solver that he uses, but he never knows what the weights are that people are going to use. And so, you know, you can see that he laid out something, but apparently no one's wanted to take it today. But we're not done yet, so we'll see. The last one from this gentleman was Mumbai. That was the Mitsubishi Electric entry, so this is his own personal entry queue. I think Q competed at Apex before, right? So this mouse is actually able to compete in the full-size maze and in the half-size maze. He came in ninth in the half size contest. That's the most prestigious event, really. So that's a really good time. Wow. All right. Nine. So the last mouse that Peter ran was the trainer, right? So this is the real one. <laughs> we wanted to be successful. All right, 42 seconds on the search. All right, so hopefully cleaning the tires will make all the difference. Peter. This entry weighs 20 grams. I mean, this is crazy. Crazy light. So this is running a fan probably at a lower speed during the surgery phase. So, so we have we have one more entry that we weren't expecting, and so we, we said he could run at the end here. Thank you for all of you that stayed to the end. I hope you considered it well worth it. I think this was a very good contest for us to have. So I appreciate you being here.